You're going to fall for this, aren't you? The time already is still out there. The crickets. Again, it's silence that's killing us. So that's not stepping up. It's making excuses. I see a lot of spunk and a lot of heart, but I don't see proper execution of what needs to happen. And that, that is what I tell you. The evolutionary engagement is your adaption into properly acting. And I'm seeing people go out and not quite do it right at all. And that uh, that is really problematic. It's not just that you feel like you want to have change. It means it's that you have to really do something proper. And a lot of the guidance is already written down if we would just go read it. Because I hope you I hope you appreciated last week going through the pro, the information that I gave you and going through the fact that sits right there and this is in lots of places when you see finally see this you know to go look for it that it's right in even the rules that are used normally to destroy us but there's no power to destroy us and the simple answer is go find that and go return that as an answer when someone tries to come against you. So I hope last week you got a little taste of that. There's a whole lot more that uh, we, I could go through. I just don't really have the time, and I don't know have the real focus for anybody if you're not interested to begin with or just interested in a you know, just a cursory uh, fashion. So I say pick something to go do, and then we can really look down and bore down on what you need to know. But there's just too much to know at some level to try and know everything before you think you know enough. Just jump in. And I think I've got a, enough cover that it'll give a good, uh, you'll get a good lead, a good head start on what has to happen. Just making excuses is not going to really cut it for us. It's just not going to do it. You can make all, all the all the discussion you want. You can pretend that you have an answer. You pretend you understand. You pretend that it's too big for you. Uh, you pretend there's nothing really to do. And the thing that has the plan against us is going to prevail. BTWRLM285, if I have those numbers right, BTWRLM285 is what should help you find the broadcast for the content links. I hope you go do there. And last week, I think some people did go, and I appreciate that you went there for you. Uh, again, I already know where this stuff is. I put it out there. I hope you all read it, because once you see that black and white, you will come to your own determinations, and there will be no question about what I'm saying, ever. And you can listen to this broadcast wherever you find us later, and wherever it's been mirrored. And I thank you all that do that, mirror this broadcast wherever you do. They share and like it and all that, that cool stuff. Uh, you can hear us live at rlmradio.xyz. It's Radio, Real Liberty Media website, radio. And I also found out, uh, remind myself, because it came up, there was an iHeart Festival. We're on iHeart as well. And I, I was able to, Grimner was able to get, allow a, a Apply for the account to be there, and, and behind woodshed, there's a there, behind the woodshed is at iHeart. So those of you at the, at the festival, I guess this weekend, you, you can find mosey on over to to uh, the pod, podcast list that's up there. I really don't pay much attention to that. I forgot all about it, but there it was. And the reason why that came up is because someone sent a comment. And I have to ask you when you send a comment. I need to know more than just a couple of words. I, I try to divine what you mean to give meaning for it, so I can talk about it if I need to. Or respond to it, and a couple comments went in, and all that was said was tune in, which uh, behind woodshed's on tune in as well. There's a woodshed, I guess, everywhere happening, but we're on tune in. I don't know what that meant. Uh, the name, just using the word, didn't help me help you. And then another broadcast network was named, and I'm not on that broadcast network. So maybe if I could ask you to put me on that broadcast network on a syndication live every year, every day, every week, I'm on live. If people don't, I don't know, I don't know if people appreciate that anymore. But I tried to, uh, again, the principle of dedication, I'm trying to hold to that. And I try to show up every week, and so far I've been able to do that. Uh, that you can have a live syndication coming through your network. So uh, there was a network, I don't even know what to respond to there. I do want, though, it, it triggered me to go look. I was triggered. I started looking around quick. I said, I forgot where all the places that uh, we come up with behind Woodshed. Uh, so uh, if you would, when you make a comment, explain it. Just I don't need to hear, you don't have to go like reams and reams. I just need to know a little bit more than three words and what that might mean uh, for you, for me, or for everyone that I may be able to retell. Uh, so, uh, that that's, I guess that's a, that note's done. Uh, also, when I was noticing, uh, talking about the crickets are still going, and here we, uh, we're coming into a different season. We missed August completely. 
Uh, but I'm noticing lots of fuzzy animals laying around and uh, hearing the hawks come out. And I was just realizing that all the all the carcasses that are about. I think we're into the time of the grim raptor. And uh, those little critters really aren't keeping up. They're not going to be making the gene pool uh, this year, this year, this next year. So watch out for yourself on anything that can uh, hunt you down. And I think I think Jules has been keeping the ucy.tv.com, uh, UCY ucytv.com going. I think we're still live there too. So I'm kind of keeping the the ghost in the machine over there. If that's true, I appreciate all that. Again, just to get the just to get the the word out, folks. I don't know what more to say. You can disagree with me, but you can't disagree with the fact that we haven't gone anywhere in uh, the 10 years that I've been broadcasting uh, necessarily. Maybe everyone, you that have stepped up, stepped up, can see changes. But everybody else is just, we're watching this thing go to where it was going to go. Uh, I don't know what more to say about that. And it was interesting what came up uh, here in the, in the news a few weeks ago uh, about a, a situation about some air energy that, that people are now commenting on which I thought was fascinating because I talked to you about it years ago. But anyway, I guess people are just now perceiving. But first I wanted to touch on something which is probably going to be the theme for today is what we're up against and how we have to, one of our jobs is to cut through it. And what I try to do is get you to read the black and white like we did last last week in showing you specific instances. Even if you weren't interested in the subject matter, it will guide you to go look for subject matter in, for things in your subject matter areas. It, was essentially how to go about destroying, outing authorita, and giving you a substantial record to show that they were had no right to come against you. And this is not your opinion. This is not a. You didn't hear me last week spout about all the constitutionality I know, or all the things I know about, and all the things that I do to support my position. How whatever status I was was important. I just went and destroyed the thing that was trying to come and point its bony finger at me and say I was going to be a subject to it. And I said, no, no, right here it says you don't have, you have no power, no delegation of authority to do what you're doing. Because we will hear that we have a limited government, but nobody knows how to keep the limit, the lid on it. And I don't know why that is, because I'm, I'm finding plenty of examples. It's not, I can't say it's 100%, but boy, oh boy, it's sure close that you're fine. When you are in some place that they're not supposed to touch, There's a. it says so. And I'm always fascinated about that. What keeps that there? Why didn't they just, the occupier was so slick and they could always change stuff. Why does that have to stay there? And why does it stay there? It's always been a fascination to me. And I don't know, this may be always, because we may never get that answer. But the, I know one of the responses to this is just to go back to those vested rights, those things that are sitting in the law that the usurpation cannot take out. And it doesn't take it out. We were talking about if you want to jump on the subject matter of meters, I've told you, go to the provision of the Administrator Procedures Act. It says right in there, they can do their consensus-based policy stuff as long as they regard the, the uh, pro provided by law. And the provided by law is a prohibition to the process if you have a right to assert, which tells you you have to assert your right. Not complain about how the, like in a meter, oh, the energy is no good, it's it's killing us. No, you got to go after the process and the right that they probably likely, because of the process they chose, did not give you a disclosure, which you're required to have, and give you a proper, a proper meaningful input. And to do all that, you have to go look at those words and know that they're there and use them. To me, I'm trying to, people, I'm getting a lot more people coming at me about, well, what do we do about these meters, because they're starting to roll them out. And I said, well, don't stop. Right now, we, we found, you, if you go look, you find out that the, the experts relied on by the uh, government agencies, whether they're state or federal, are pretty set in stone. So until you attack, attack those, they're going to follow what those, so ex, uh, those experts say, and th that doesn't show certain things that we know now. So you've got to attack that if you're going to go there. Otherwise, go look at the process they're bringing this thing in and answer through the failure of the process. Stop complaining about all the health harm because you're not going to change that until you go change the, the sources and the sourcing of what they check, which can be done, but it's a different step. But if you're going to attack this, stop complaining about the meters. Uh, start complaining about the failure of the due process that was owed you, failed, and now is imposing these things on you. So it's a different approach that I try to show you here behind Woodshed every week. And I hope you appreciated that clarity last week. They want to close you out of a place, and they don't have an authority to close you out. All you got to do is restate the one sentence that says that. You don't have to go on and on and on. It's pretty simple. And so what they do is they come out with these orders, they come out with this stuff, and this authorita shows up, 
It tries to convince you to buy into what they have, what they're selling, the snake oil they're selling, and it's a matter of their perception. And this story comes up from uh, John Pilger. He, his first opening paragraph is exactly that point. Uh, hold the front page. Reporters are missing. This is speaking to now the censorship that's coming down to control the perception, control, the, as you call it, propaganda. It's controlling a perception that people have. If you can keep the natives from being restless as an occupier, you're doing your job. That's all their really main main job is to do, and they get to remove the rest of it in. So you, your job is to not be not uh, not feel. As soon as you feel like you're not restless, then something's wrong. It's the first thing you should start thinking, especially when you look around and you see how wrong it is, how insane it's gotten. But here, I'll re just read the opening paragraph, and we'll get to that. He identifies it here as well. So much of mainstream journalism has descended to a level of a cult-like formula of bias, hearsay, and omission. Subjectivism is all. Slogans and outrage are proof enough. What matters is perception, says John Pilger. I've told you this for years, folks. I'm just going to call his, my attention, to, your attention to him. He says it too. He sees it. He talks about it in one of the, if we can call them pillars, of, of, of the check and balance that's been missing probably forever that we didn't under understand uh, the the amount of information you get is all designed i don't need to really need to, after looking at it from this perspective how i i've been going along this i don't even need to know about bernays or all this other and the the overtaking and the owners of the journalists and all that all i need to know is the occupying force needs to keep you from understanding what it's doing i talked to you about the false front uh, the spaghetti western false front society that you live in You'll never, you'll never really perceive it until you see it, and then when you see it, it's like you can't, you can't not see it. It's that 3D picture that a, a 2D picture that you see a 3D image in. As soon as you get your eyes just right, you see it. You can't ever be taken away from it. Until you get your eyes just right, you won't see a thing. Now you'll, you'll make all kinds of discussion about one way or the other on me, and make excuses on one way or the other on getting done, getting something done, and make all the excuses about you have nothing to focus on. That's just excuses. And as I was writing, and we have made some communication now and some emails, as I was explaining to somebody, the occupier don't care as long as you stay ineffectual. They don't care what reason you use. You don't have the luxury of using an excuse, ever. The, the, if I'll, I'll say it one more time. The main point about an occupation in any, any type is to keep the victim of it from throwing it off. And if you don't throw it off, it's on you, like a par any parasite. And so that's the rule. That's the bottom line rule. I don't, go to, I don't have to go anywhere else to discuss any of this. I don't have to go to constitutions, laws, codes, all the other things you don't like, or types of uh, rules and types of names and, and ethnicities. And I don't have to go anywhere. All I know is that when someone tries to occupy someone else, if they don't throw it off, they're subject to that occupation. And the job of the occupier is to keep the one who they're subjecting to be continually subjected. That's it. And so here it is. I wanted to point out today, John Pilger comes up with it. it, it what matters is perception. I would also add, and it's just the same, it's like the flip side of the same coin, it's the misperception management as well. That's an even to me. That's almost more interesting, even though it really is not much different. Your perception could be a misperception, but that misperception is how they keep you bound down without even action. As soon as you perceive something, you have the ability to actually just to to get out. If you are misperceiving something, they just keep you misperceiving. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty neat trick. And so that's what I've kind of noticed in all this. And so I have an authority that steps up, and says I got the authority to close you out of a place. As I talked last week, I went right through this. I hope you heard that. And then it says it talked about general prohibitions. And I said, well, right in there, if you know what the code is for the rule now, not the law, but the rule implementing the law, the rule says the general prohibition is against him, the guy who wrote that order, in particular places. And it just so happens one of the places that is, is foreclosed to him is one of the things we operate through. If I can use the word operate without triggering anybody. It's what we uh, we can assert and rely on. It happens to be this general mining law. And then I told you something really interesting. It also pertains to the Wilderness Act. I hope someone, I hope that a couple of you got that triggered. How is it that there's no authority over in the Forest Service to keep people out of the Wilderness Act when no one's supposed to be in there? You need to go read the Wilderness Act, and you're going to find out the fraud that's been put on your perception about those places. 
that was like number point number three we wanted to clarify through Jefferson Mining District, and we haven't got to point one yet. I'm getting everyone to understand what a grant does and how it pr forecloses all this to anybody. No, we get the you know, we get all these other types that uh, that are the gurus that are listened to, and, and they won't listen to to me to tell you not to listen to me. Go read the law to tell it to yourself. And if you're not interested in the mining law or wilderness areas, I tell you go look at that anyway because it's going to give you the eyes to see the rest of it because it's all the same plan. It's all done against you in the same manner. Why? Because it works. And that's how the occupier keeps it, controls your perception. And I, I say it's a misperception, and they do that as a two-step process. Because if you perceive, then you might be able to perceive the right way. If you misperceive, you're not even close to coming to a proper perception. Anyway, so uh, moving on, because this is the, uh, you'll, you'll see kind of as we go today, they just continue to make these assertions. You can buy into them or not, and it doesn't matter that you say you don't buy in. Once you see you don't buy in, it means there's an affront to you, an attack on you, and you have to throw that off. So nobody has the excuse they weren't interested. It may not interest you, like I told you. I really don't like, I don't like doing any of this, but it's necessary. It's necessary because we don't live in the place that we were told. There was a cage built up around us that was pretty, they put pretty pictures hanging on the cage walls, and we forgot to look at the bars. So there was a discussion that came in weeks ago on this perception thing, and it just kind of interested me. It's somebody who's, uh, it was an article, you get the link, uh, someone who's known in the, uh, I don't know, in the social media side, I don't know, well well received I don't know anything about these people. They get lots of views, but no follow-through. Just everyone seems in, they, they, they sit content in what they know instead of what they do with what they know. And that bothers me, and I don't know what else to do with that. Because you're not doing anything to know so much and do nothing with it. And then to do something with what you think you know and then do it improperly is the same answer. The occupier loves that. Keep misperceiving and then doing the wrong thing within that. Ask the, keep continuing actually wrong question. You're going to get the right answer. Uh, but here it was, uh, I wanted to touch base with, this was years ago, I remember, but it was interesting. I went into my own absence with this. I'd, it took years to come back to the thought. I'd, anyway, I told you this was coming um, back around, I think it was 2000, and, uh, it was right before 2011, and I said there was a darkness coming in this in the nation, in the world, actually, but for us, because it's where we have the, in the United States of America, we have the control here. We don't have it for the world, but the world was coming into a dark, a dark energy, a dark space. And I could, I had seen, been shown some stuff going into it, but I didn't see past it. It was really a, it was just a darkness. And I was a little concerned, you know, like the dark wants to give you, you want to get this negative connotation of the dark, but I understand that dark is just neutral. It, it, it's just a, we don't know what that is. And I wasn't given, if you will, given sight into that time period. And I said there was something shifting in, in our decision that we make in that time will determine our future. And I'll just... As I say this now today, I'm going to tell you, we got what we got today because we didn't step up cohesively in that time period. All this turmoil that you're watching, all this stuff about Trump and all this, and, and Trump himself, these, this uh, reality game show thing, we got this because we, the people, didn't mass together and drop our differences. Now, we create this so-called darkness, this neutrality of void that we went through, and now we're reaping those rewards. And so this, again, I said, when we go through this, we will deter it'll be term determined. There's nothing each one of us can do. We have to each contribute to, to make it go somewhere. But we, we, what our collective meaning is, is what we see today. Now, we're passing through that time of darkness that I was in. And I'm just kind of, kind of going through this the same way as everybody else because I'd seen this stuff coming from about, well, when they went and done it. There was a big thing happened. I was in a different headspace around 20, 2000, 2001. And there was a bunch of stuff that came off, and then we had the darkness in about 2011. What I'm bringing this up here is because it's just now hitting, hitting the uh, mainstream response that there's a darkness upon us. And I wanted to touch this just a little bit. Uh, this is another perception thing. I find it very fascinating this darkness upon us is now coming because I've always had a problem with people who want to perceive the future, even when I was looking at it that it's really kind of problematic. But to, I'll suggest today, it says several high conscience people I've spoken to independently told me they felt a shift in energy. It was written here in this article. Something is going on. This feeling happened two or three weeks ago, and it wasn't about politics or election. The feeling is big, much bigger. There has been an energy shift. Whenever you talk about energy, 
haters appear. It's woo-woo. But this only shows they are morons. You see energy measured every day, though it's wrapped in terms like consumer confidence, inflation, and bubbles. I don't agree with that point, but that's this writer's perception. This energy I speak to is a different type of energy. It's a different thing. Uh, what I want to point out is they're feeling, these people now, he'll go through this article and talk to people who t profess themselves to be these people who can see this stuff, this energy, sense this energy. And they're talking about it a couple weeks ago, and this article is even a couple, maybe a month old. Now. I want to point out to you, this is a misperception to my my perception. I declared to you before, not that I'm the anything important. I wanted you to, I, I was hoping that we would pick up and in the void we would make the right decisions and not come up with what we had today. We would be much more advanced from where we are. But we didn't. And so, okay, here we are. So it's still, you know, you still got to work hard and hope, it's still hope harder that it comes out. Uh, that the energy they spoke of changing was a feeling. I'm going to suggest to you how is now the, the uh, their people are now receiving the effect of what we didn't do uh, eight years ago, uh, seven or eight years ago. So we're going to see a lot of perception promotion, that there's people out there now, it says it's coming, have got this insight of doom or whatever, darkness or an energy shift, I don't know what it's all going to be. Yes, it's all because, but it's all because of what we hadn't done in the last eight, year, eight years ago. That these people really are only, as we see, feelings more important than actual insight that we're going to get hit by this, and it's going to cause a perception shift in us if we're not protective of, it, of any of it. These people are kind of being promoted as knowers of this stuff, and I'm suggesting to you they're just reflectors of the effect. They're, they're already late. In other words, those of us that follow them and agree with this position, we're going to be eight years behind again. We're going to be setting ourselves up for a problem uh, scheduling. We really need to be ahead of it. It's why I keep telling you, Start getting into what the reality that's being worked through is now, and you'll start to see sense, things will be brought to you to see into the future. Not only are we behind behind it, and we didn't fulfill what uh, what we should have done, as I see what would have caused a shift. We didn't do what that did was supposed to do. Uh, that was indicative again of the miners. This is a pretty fascinating correlation. Remember, we started Jefferson Mining just to counter this stuff, and we were going to have a bunch of miners that were going to get together in a body of understanding and 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 processing procedures, understanding and formal addressment of this problem, and that thing blew up. It, it, it was uh, there was Ill, evil, if you will, come in and destroyed that whole thing, and so there's only a core and small group of people now working. So that was indicative of the macrocosm we call America, or in fact the world now, whatever reason we weren't going to be able to come to the right conclusions. We were going to be driven, this thing is driven a lot deeper than most even these people think it is. They want to relate it to things of consumerism, confidence, and inflation, and bubbles. It's not that at all. That's the effect of your, going through your perception again. If we buy into this thing that we all of a sudden now there's people that are knowers, the gurus, understand the energy shift, we're going to be eight years behind. I don't know if this is even anything a big deal. I'm just pointing out to you this was an indicator to me. We're now still, the perception management is on to keep us bound to a time schedule of effect that's actually not what we need to be dealing in. The effect is you can't do anything in the effect. You're too late. So let's, I'm asking us, I said, I guess in this, let's not be persuaded by those that prof profess to say, oh, we, I see, I'm feeling an energy shift. Folks, that happened. It happened. It was coming and we went through it and we failed and, and now we have to har uh, more work to do. It's not over for us. It's just that we have a different work to do and a more refined work. In some regard, I see it as a pretty interesting positive. But it's gonna it filters out more and more people. It really is a refining process of of men and women and in, in what they're up against, these occupations in the world. I just wanted to point this out. Perception management, we're being perceived there's a perception shift of energy and it's the wrong they're pointing out the, all the wrong things of what's really going on underneath. I'm talking deep here in the spiritual battle. And we keep going on the effect of energy and we argue about all that, we're we've missed it. We've missed it no different than Last night we were talking in the chat room about voting, vote harder, and the, that I said that that tells you that that's irrelevant. And so what do you do? And then the, the only thing that came up with was some subject matter, and then it got diffuse, and then all of a sudden they got into arguing, and then we went on. And certainly nothing happened about that, even though we were right at the point of finding for anyone what was important to them and move through the important part. We would rather not do that. 
And so we're doing this continually to ourselves. We're not really paying attention to this deeper energy, if you will, not in the context of the superfluous, our responses to the fabricated things, but the actual deep drivers. And so our perceptions being adjusted, as I saw this, I was pretty, I'm concerned a bit because it's just continuing. It's the social media nonsense as well. It's all perception management. And it's not just that you know that. You can say that you know that and you think you're doing nothing. I mean, you're not engaging, it, but, but you, you've just eliminated yourself. You're not going to be effective. You can't define something as someone else's job and, and not have it affect you because it's not going to stop it, that you believe someone, some other style of, uh, of uh, awareness is, is what's really do, uh, being affected and you're not. If you're not stopping whatever you saw as the wrong, it's affecting you. You become inert to the whole problem. And so we have these things and suggestions coming uh, for the coming future that are all really predictable. It's uh, in part you see it written, but you also see the tel- there's signals coming. It's coming again. They didn't get enough of you the first time. I guess they're coming again. Bill Gates, the threat of disease X, global pandemic is very real, was a news story here. And again, perception management. We can all dismiss this and say, oh, yeah, that's Bill Gates and all this. But there's very important clues here coming. And uh, again, if we do the wrong, let's say, um, like we see going on, like I just mentioned, the, what was it, the, uh, the, the meters. If we go off on the health issues, likely we're going to run into a wall of distraction and a, di- a wall of division. If we go after the processes that are imposed upon us without, without the required due process and attack those systems that are not utilized, we don't attack those, we don't step up to do that, that's where we're going to fail. And we don't do it that way, we will fail. If we go after gates or any of this other stuff or that we, we argue amongst ourselves whether or not, you know, a disease and a, and a, or a vaccine is a problem. Those are clearly a problem, but that's not where you're going to get this. This is not done in the in the in the last moment. But they are making some perception management claims here. A global health policy. Now, global. What's he speaking? Bill Gates is speaking to this. How is he able to do that? All right. So this is a a bigger play going on, and it's all a fabrication, but it's very real. Why? Because it's man-made. It's novel. Remember, the pandemic is a made-up word. A global pandemic requires it, uh, the pandemic be global. It's made up by the WHO, not the OWL, not the ROC group, but the World Health Organization, the WHO. And they make this definition up. And so he's sitting in there telling you that this made-up definition is coming to bear on this disease X. Another perception, a disease X is the ultimate unknown, and we're going to die. And that's going to come reflecting to us in, in certain ways. But they're building this perception up that there's some, nothing you can do except to give it over to the expert say. And we can go through, again, I could read all the argument, but I'm just wondering why. It's not about knowing that they do this. I'm telling you there's a signal coming, uh, the perception that you should, if you're interested at all in this, you need to gear up in the side, uh, the part I'm telling you to gear up in to stop it procedurally and not get into arguments over people over whether or not, see, once you argue whether or not a vaccine is good, you've agreed they can make it. You've agreed that they've done a process sufficient to allow it. You've allowed this guy's authority. He's supposed to be with Microsoft. What does he do? Go look at Bill Gates' history. What does he do? What did he start out? He just happened to be a guy laying on a couch, happened to overhear a conversation and said, oh, I think I can make some, make something of that code that IBM doesn't know. He didn't really do much. And yet, now look, he's becoming, in our in my lifetime, he's become this, this seer of, of disease and, and a bo- bogeyman. And so, we're being set up again, a perception management, that these people have authority, that they can do it. We're being told, and I will not deny that there's going to be some kind of disease coming and some kind of salvation that they want to do. These, uh, they, they don't, at any rate, they, they will uh, be- make you believe and perceive that they can help you. And those of you that don't believe it haven't stopped it, so that now you're gonna, you're inert to that. See, it's still coming, it's still working. They so talk about global health policy. How is that even possible? But we buy into that, we buy into all of this stuff. And then they talk in in woulds, coulds, and shoulds. The likelihood of an explosive global pandemic breaking out in a relatively near future increases along with the population in the world's world's poorest countries which are presently experiencing explosive population growth, even as birth rates in the development world, developed world plummet. That's all a planned situation as well, folks. I mean, all this is set up. Just, if anybody who has any knowledge knows this is set up. So they do the, 
the sensational words of explosive twice in there, and then they said likelihood. Based in what? Based in the fact that they're going to create a novel injection into a society that has a lot of people that can spread this stuff around? Based on vaccines we know shed and cause the problem? Based on the actual inverse of the herd mentality, when you shove a bunch of people together, that herd will get sick? I mean, I'm not going to go through all this stuff, but the, the thought has to be a lot different than what we're being told. The perception is we're, we don't have a chance against this stuff. And this allows other people to get fearful. And then they, if you are, then they have you. If you're not and you're obstinate and don't work against it, they have you because you become inert to it. You won't work against this. You just think what you know is good enough. It isn't, but that's the way they work it. And something that they do talk about that you have to kind of parse through is, uh, to me, is these little notices of what's going on really behind the scenes. And it gets, I told you, they'll do something, they'll allow. Remember, the Clean Water Act is a is really an act to pollute water just so much. And if you if you pollute water even in excess and you tell them, that's fine. If you pollute water in excess and you don't tell them, that's not, gone. that's not fine. Otherwise, you can pollute water just a little bit. That's the Clean Water Act. That's the Clean Air Act as well. And there's a reason for why they have to do it like that, and that's okay, fine for the for this discussion. The point is, it's not purity, it's not pristine, it's not like everything the iconic environmentalists talk about. There are certain parameters that they'll allow, the government will allow to harm you, and allow uh, to harm uh, the consum the consumption of these things, and essentially the bottom line. They'll allow the bottom line to prosper some little bit in a wrong, and it starts popping out in things like this. What I what just came up here last night, the FDA and CDC. In issue separate warnings for pet owners, including bacteria resistance. The FDA has announced that some flea and tick medications can cause adverse reactions in dogs and cats, issuing warnings to pet owners and, pet and vets. Meanwhile, the CDC has announced that people are getting sick from pets and the antibiotics are failing to work. Now, isn't that an interesting notice? How is it that those two are related? It's not just about hurting your dog. This is about working against a so-called medical f uh, capacity treatment that's affecting that. We read, I read a little bit about that on another subject last week. See, we really don't know. They just make this stuff go through and then wait until the damage happens. And if it's big enough, the damage becomes big enough, the threat to the bot actual bottom line becomes big enough, then they talk to you about it. Animals that receive drugs... In the isozaxoline class, including products sold under the names Bra Brave, Brevecto, Nexgard, and Simperica, have experienced adverse events such as muscle tremors, ataxia, and seizures, the FDA said. Another product in this class, Credilio, recently received FDA approval. These products are approved for treatment and prevention of tick, uh, flea infestations and the treatment and control of tick infestation, says the FDA. The FDA says it was also working with manufacturers on isozaxoline products to include new label information to highlight neurological effects. I'm going to stop reading right there. I'm going to read that last part again. The FDA says it is also working with manufacturers of isozaxoline products to include new label warnings to highlight neurological events. Don't not sell it. No, we're going to sell it, and it's okay as long as we give you notice that we're going to hurt you, is the rule. And that is going to come to you. This is telling you that we can hurt you, and you really can't do nothing about it because we told you we're going to hurt you. Now I want you to bring up about every other product data sheet and every other pharmaceutical. How about those vaccines? Even death. And where do you get that right? You get that out of Title 50. Go read it, folks. It's throughout Title 50. Go read. Go listen to Cliff Richard, Clint Richardson's Lethal Injection. Make sure to pay attention 20 minutes in. He goes and reads part of Title 50 for you. The FDA is working with manufacturers on these products to include new label instructions. Don't stop them. No. Continue to sell them, but we need to notify all the uh, the victims of our plunder of the fact. And so, what's the answer to this? Stop using these chemicals. Don't you, flea and tick stuff. Stop using the chemicals. Use a comb. I mean, come on. Take a little bit more time with uh, with, with your pet. You take on a little. You take on a child, I suppose. You take on a pet. Anybody who, who has less of a less of a concern, I, I don't know, should have one. But that's neither here nor there for me to say. The point is, is that 
the perception is here, but they're, the first perception is they're looking out for you because they gave you a notice. But then you look inside what they're doing, and they don't really care for you. And so you can continue to be serv doing this. You can continue to serve this master. Or you take step back and figure, well, this is not right. How do I stop this? What is? What do I do to stop it? And it may be not even something that you even have a concept on when you make that question. Is it important enough to you that right now the two agencies have proven they will continue to allow harmful chemicals in as a treatment to to your pet, which turns around the way they work this, and it affects these antibiotics that you take. And I have told you, I can't, was well, this my disclaimer? I've, I'm here today because of, because of a, an antibiotic. If it wasn't for that antibiotic, I wouldn't be here today. So I'm not going to tell you that it's completely, uh, that these things are complete poison. I'm telling you that they got put in their proper place. No different than vaccines have to be balanced against their ultimate, poten real potential harm, like death. That's when they become relevant. Uh, is the same thing for antibiotics. You just don't take them for everything. In this case, I was it was required that I took it because there was nothing else that would stop or was it going to kill me, going to kill me. I told you, I, I've told you this story. I had something that was going to kill me, and I knew it. That little, that spirit, that, that energy that you're, you're given insight, that's what told me. You're not going to make it till Monday. And the only thing that was could have been solved that was an antibody. In fact, that wasn't even good enough. They had to do something else together with that in order to, to stop what, would have, what was going to kill me. That was how you use those. Those are the, the, those are the way you measure the use and weight of the efficacy of those up against death. And so we can listen to how they're doing this. They're saying they're willing to give you neurological events. What, Gardasil, folks? Well, just, just one. Just, we just stop just one. Yeah, no, well, we affect one, and then we hide it underneath the vaccine court. Why? Because of this little notice tells us it sets a perception like they're helping us. In fact, they're, they're, they're poisoning you and affecting you a little bit, and I mean in your numbers. And you don't know whether or not you're susceptible because now they're finding out one of the reasons is it really is a genetic interaction somehow. We don't do certain things in our bodies. Our immune systems don't quite function quite right. And these chemicals can come in and interrupt even that bit and really cause harm. Anyway, perception manager here, they, they're there to help you. They're here to give you the notice as a problem. And yet when you look, they're going to continue those, those, the use of those. Uh, they know that cause these harms to you. Cannot I know I don't know how you can agree with that. We're shifting also, aren't we, to who makes those decisions? And we've been talking lately here because it just becomes the, the the news. But I'm trying to point out it's part of the plan, and we've been told some of this in the future, even if it sounds sci-fi. E, there's a lineage of a probability and possibility of thought of how this was going to progress. We're talking also who's making these decisions. Remember, this will be put in algorithm, what they do here. You don't need people to decide whether or not how much of something affects some number that they've put on some risk management insurance form, some externality factor, uh, some statistic that they then plug into a number in an algorithm that decides how much of this stuff can go out and what the notices would have to be. You can almost see that they just don't need people anymore in a lot of this stuff. And they'll say that's an objective basis. That's the benefit of objective basis, they'll tell you. Perception management. You'll say, okay, it's an expert. It's something outside of time and mind of whatever I've ever, ever had in my life, and it's outside of my expertise completely. It's in technology. I have no clue about they must be right. And yet you go back to, I don't need to have all that when I go look at the law, and, and it says right in the code that they, in Title 50, they can hurt you. And then in their paperwork, they tell you that they have to give you, and they have to give you notice, so they do, and this is what this is all about. And then in Title 50, they say, give you notice, they can hurt you. And then when they go look at the rules that implement that, they can hurt you. That I don't have to go look at how they do it. I don't need to know the technology. I just need to know they can hurt me. And you need to know that too, but not because I say so or that you've figured it out on something you found. No, you need to go literally chapter and verse because that's where this is going. When you go up against this future inert AI that's supposed to be objective, you're going to have to be able to defeat that. Think about this. It's just pattern recognition. And yet you're going to have to, you're going to, have to take this, your, they call the human element, this creative element, and you're going to have to apply it. That's what's going to defeat this. 
then until you step up and start putting that in, you won't. Because they're, they're working on all those same so-called human frailties. Your animal nature is what they work on. And I saw it last night in the chat. People just jumped in and got it, went at each other. And in a few minutes, it made, the discussion didn't mad go anywhere. And it, and it went on to the other just nonsense stuff in my mind. Keep talking about stuff, it doesn't matter. Just keep talking about it. That's exactly what, what is, need, is required for us not to do anything here. Uh, at, so we move on, and we got this uh, technocracy coming. This is all written. You don't have to. It's not sci-fi that this is coming. What was sci-fi was when it was told to us in the 90s, and the 80s, and the 70s, in the movies. Even before that, even even before that, in the 30s, if you knew what what you started looking at. At this high-tech firm, the boss is an AI-powered algorithm. So government is a corporation. You can see that in 28 U.S.C. 3002. I think it is. Is it 28 U.S.C.? Yeah, I think that's the judicial. At any rate, uh, 3002, it says if there's any funds used, uh, the government is a corporation. A lot of people jump on that and say that's the end all be all. It's not, but because they forget about land disposal, but and it's not has nothing to do with that. But uh, at any rate, so we'll, I'll mention it just to say, okay, be careful because they also give you the right, this corporation, when it uses funds, it also gives you the right to hurt you. And we see the evidence of how they go and they tell you that they're helping you, but in fact they're continuing to work in collusion to harm you at some little bit. And some of you, not all of you, again, Perception management, if you think that there's only a handful of people, a good thing it didn't happen to you, then you think everything's fine. Then you continue to look down the world like you've looked around when they told you about your taxes and your driver's licenses and, and your uh, employment to slave status and all the things you said you had to do and can't do without that they imposed. None of you, and that's including me, uh, said anything about it. Now, that changed in me in the last 20 years, but there's not enough of us doing the right and proper thing. More people are coming, but as I've pointed out, you can know a thing and not really be relevant to a thing. You can do a thing and it not be actually the proper thing to do. We still have some tuning up, a lot of tuning up to do. Uh, the AI here is coming great, and now they've come another story, another perception management, that the AI is going to be able to handle it. But I found something very sim interesting little statement in here, which is really telegraphing the, the past with what's going coming in the future. And this is a true uh, truth of, of how this uh, really this dynamic works, and we can continue to allow it, or we can take the uh, take the lessons from it and figure out where is our place. And when this comes in, because we haven't been able to stop it, and we're not going to as long as we stay divided, how are we going to how are we going to exist around this? But at this high tech firm, the boss is an AI powered algorithm. I'm not even talking now about how they get that, the computers and all that, and and all the fail. They don't talk about any of that. They said this is just AI. This is an authority of its own, and it's a boss. Perception management. You actually buy into that. Each morning when she gets to work at Bowery Farming Incorporated, Katie Morick changes into a clear, clean uniform, puts on a hairnet, and clean cleans her hands with sanitizer. Then she consults a computer monitor displaying all the tasks she needs to accomplish that day. The to-do list's author isn't human. It's a piece of proprietary software that uses reams of data collected at the indoor farm that make important decisions. How much water to each, how much to water each plant, the intensity of light required, when, when to harvest, and so on. In short, Morick is her, and her fellow human farmers do what the computer tells them to do. And so, I read a little bit more on the story, but I went right back to this point, this human farmers. And when you go back and read that story, it says that one day uh, Miss Mork will be replaced when they figure out how to replace her with an AI. This system is a system of harvest, of production and harvest for an output. And when I saw the term human farmers, it kind of triggered something in my mind that most of you should be thinking maybe would be triggered. What movie back when uh, had, when the AI decided it needed energy, it didn't need the plants anymore. It decided, because this thing is the boss, it decides. What, 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 program, what movie did you see where energy was a harvest? Because that's what it needed to run. The AI decided, I don't need plants, I don't need plants, I need energy. And when you go back to this term called human farmers, and the AI becomes the farmer, and it becomes farming humans, don't we have the movie The Matrix? And I keep telling you The Matrix is not a movie. 
And they're working on the technology right now to get rid of Miss Morich. It's the last bit of having the do-to-do to to do list that then the AI can say, I don't need, I don't need to harvest, uh, make harvests for humans. I'll just harvest humans. And they're doing it indoors on a setup and the most efficient there can be. And you see all the tales of the perception management is this is good for you. We can produce more food. This is human. This Miss Morris is just nothing, another farm worker, and she makes just above minimum wage, which is better than the guys in the field. And that's how they're going to sell it to you. And that's how they're going to make this thing work through. But don't, don't forget, this this facility is a human farmer. The Matrix is not a movie. Remember, they're doing AI that they don't understand, and it makes decisions no one understands and can't find out. It's not beyond the pale here. As they work out how people are not relevant, and how the boss, and you can put this in any subject matter area you want, becomes the the determiner, as I said earlier, they give it over to experts say, becomes this supposed inert, unbiased, unbiased answering machine for all your woes. It's not, but that's what we all buy into. And they're promoting this as a good thing. The perception is, all this is good. Uh, What else? Uh, More efficient. How can we not want that? Oh, more wages to one worker. Now, you have to understand, it's only one worker getting, uh, instead of uh, whatever the farm workers get, she gets just a little better than that. And she takes her orders from this printout. And, and they talk in the article that they're pretty. as soon as they figure out how to get rid of her, they're going to have this thing pretty automated. And that makes the farming a little different then. Because then the AI is going to say, I don't need to feed humans. They're irrelevant now. I can do it myself. What I need is energy. Get in your pod. So how are they going to do that? They're not going to do it to you. They're going to do it to the ones common. Right? And so how is, how, is that, how is that going to work? Well, before they get to the transition where they get rid of Miss Morich, they're going to have her be able to do more than one thing than just go through a to-do list. In fact, they can make it look really, really cool, and they're going to be able to give dis- handicapped people the power to do multiple things by, by thought, what Mrs. Morich does right now by hand. And so as this is developed, you're going to see less and less capable people because it's good to give them something to do in order to do the things that have not quite yet been able to be done by, uh, still have to be done by, uh, that can be undone by machines and removing the so-called human out of the picture. And here we have a story. It's now possible to telepathically communicate with a drone swarm. DARPA's new research in brain-computer interfaces is allowing a pilot to control multiple simulated aircraft at once. Don't get me wrong. This fa- this technology is fascinating. It just trips me out. Really kind of exciting. I was in R&D for a while. This is a fascinating realm to be existing in. Things that don't exist in the world in one day are existent the next day. It's really a cool thing. But it's, it is this technology, and it's usually... In fact, I worked the company I worked for, half of which was pretty much top secret. It was things that you just didn't talk about, and they came from places that you didn't know. Uh, the other part of it was completely public, but it was private corporations buying the, buying the, the research and development. And we, we were, as just technicians and engineers, we were inert from the whole process. We just were given a project. Make this happen. And the engineer would take it on, and they'd come to my, I was an engineer's technician, and I would say, okay, I'll build it. And so we did. What they ended up really doing with them, where they go, you could take an idea. Some were pretty obviously, obvious, like a, a, harp, a pacemaker, programmable pacemaker, before they were even in the world. But you can kind of tell what that's going to do. But when you get projects that seem to be black boxes with a lot of empty parts, you start wondering what you're doing, and you kind of make up, you have to kind of make it up. But it's pretty fascinating what they think they're doing. And then you find out that they do things like this: a person with a brain chip can now pilot a swarm of drones. Or even advanced fighter jets, thanks to research funded by the United States Military's Department uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. The work builds on research from 2015, if you don't think how fast this is coming, which allowed a paralyzed woman 
to steer an a, a virtual five, F-35 Joint Strike Fighter with only a small surgically implanted microchip. And Thursday, o agency officials announced that they had scaled up the technology to allow a user to steer multiple jets at once. As of today, signals from the brain can be used to command and control not just one aircraft, but three simultaneous types of aircraft. More importantly, DARPA has, was able to improve the interaction between pilot and simulated jet to allow the operator, a paralyzed man named Nathan, to not just send, but receive signals from the craft. Can I remind you of the movie Brainstorm? Recording impulses and experiences in one, uh, to, from one, from someone different than the one that's played back the tape and in, is experiencing the uh, feels and re relives the experience from tape. Remember, I told you that a, a, a month, years ago, we had the, or maybe a couple years ago, the experiment where the you human sits in front of a computer and in another room is a rat. And the human was able to get the rat to move his tail. And I said, no, what you're looking at is the rat telling the human to move my tail because I don't want you to embarrass me. I was telling you there was reverse signals coming from the, from the supposed uh, drone, the, the subject. I was telling you the rat, this is the human rat race. The, the rats run the, won the race. That signals are coming from, this is a two, this is a natural process. There's big signals are coming from, and all we have to do is pick them up. You now hear the proof that we have two-way communications from the machine to the people, back to the machine. And you can do multiple machines at once, and then there's multiple paths back to you. And you're paralyzed. Let's go back to back to Mrs. Morich. Once they figure out how to do all her job, they just have one guy run three or four factories, don't they? And he's paralyzed. And you think, oh, that's great. I'm going to give this guy who's paralyzed, can't do anything else. We're going to put his mind to work. We're going to give him something to do so he doesn't have to worry about his life. Doesn't have to mope about how, bad, how disabled he is in the world. Isn't that what they said in the Matrix? AI tried to give you the Matrix, the people, the people, the pod people, tried to give them everything they wanted, made everything nice. And they still revolted because they were bored. You, the, the AI figured, I'll give them everything they want. This is, how, this is our fallen nature they're speaking to that people don't tend to agree, uh, don't tend to think is working all the time. You're looking for distraction. You're looking to be, you're working to be ruffled. You're working to be triggered. Very few of you will be working to get not triggered and be really maybe triggered by the most important things and stop those, work to stop them. But you're working to be triggered. And isn't it the fact that if you put some demand on somebody and you get them to focus on something, they can relieve themselves of everything else other than what they can get focused on? That's what they said in the Matrix. The AI, the answer to the, the, the artificial intelligence says, well, if you guys are going to revolt, you pod people are going to revolt. When I'm sucking energy, I need to have you sitting in your pods, not revolting. I need to have you just lay there. I need your energy. And so the AI said, well, if I give them a problem to solve, they're going to stop fighting with me. And that's what happened. And so they was able to give input the machine into the brain structure that they had established to gain the energy of the life form that they fed more efficiently, proper amount of light, proper amount of food, and they imparted, uh, imported sensations to this brain structure that kept it content because it was battling demons. It was battling the problems of its, of its confinement, uh, not knowing it was confined. It was ba battling a problem it was placed before it just so that it, it could do something. Once it did that, it didn't care. It was focused on something. It didn't matter that it was a torment. That was sufficient. So now we're showing here that, the, that we now have ability to connect to multiple machines, and they can feed back, and they can keep you focused on something. All I got to do is adjust your interest, and I can get you to do so. I wish I could do that here behind the woodshed and get you interested in some of the things I'm talking about. But no, this is going to be coming into the future. Likely, not many of anybody that I know I'm talking to with, unless you're a, unless you're a test subject and kind of agreed to that. 
The brain chip allows for both two-way communication from the machine to the being to the being to the machine. Didn't sound much different than The Matrix is not a movie to me. Sounds about right. Tokyo Cafe can be staffed by robots run by the disabled. If you don't think this is already happening. They have the disabled running robots that serves you in a store. Isn't that great we put disabled people to work? On the one hand, I'll tell you that it is pretty neat. On the other hand, listen to how this thing starts to work out to get you a perception to be that this was all cool as it came on to us. Think about how they work this. Sounds about right. Talk, Tokyo Cafe to be staffed by robots run by disabled. A new cafe opening in Tokyo will use robot waiters remotely controlled by physically disabled human employees. According to the Japanese robot designer responsible for the... I thought DARPA just had this. No, no, Japanese have it too. And they're gonna have, somebody's going to serve you in a restaurant. And you're going to be told that some disabled worker is able to do that. In fact, he's a, he's a disabled worker is actually running all the robots serving you. Well, isn't that special, folks? Isn't that cool? On the surface, it's really cool. But this is not about the surface. According to the Japanese robot designer responsible for the move, the plan to use physically disabled workers to remotely control robot waiters in real time will support the employment of those who can't move their bodies. Cited the South China Morning Post. <laughs> the central technological implementers is China, folks. I keep telling you about this. The humans controlled the robot waiters will use proprietary hardware and software to overcome severe physical disabilities, including amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, a motor neuron disease. So when they uh, when you get your pets all, maybe they put it to your pet. When they get to take these uh, flea and tick medicines, they'll just wire your pet up to do run robots around because it's fun. But they're going to give this to humans. It's hardware and software is proprietary. That's outside of any constraint of a constitution. Folks. I hope you put that together. But here it is, folks. They're already putting in place. It. Disabled people will run robots with their mind. DARPA makes a big deal about it. Next thing, Tokyo's already got it. What is this? What's going on? The Matrix is not a movie, it seems, folks. I'm going to have to throw it seems, uh, because I'm hoping that dark time that I saw was coming, that we passed through, that we failed, I hope we can overcome the next one coming through and, and do better. And so they made the decision, someone made a decision, we can take and use disabled people. Sounds like a cool thing. We're going to use their brains. And we're going to use them to do things that most people wouldn't do otherwise, and we're going to task them with something, we're going to keep them occupied. And we found out from the movie, The Matrix, that uh, when you do that, people are satisfied. They're satisfied in their turmoil. They're satisfied in their torture. We enjoy that. And this is what social media seems to be uh, plumbing uh, the entire time. We're being wired uh, and, and reprogrammed ourselves to accept this. And it won't be us again. It'll be our offspring, if it is our offspring. Because AI is running the show now, and AI says there's a more efficient way, and uh, you, we need you humans in order to make the technology to make to get rid of yourselves, because we need to use you humans. And so, what happens if uh, maybe the Matrix is not a movie was a little bit off, and they tried to use people and said they didn't find out they didn't need to use people, they just want the energy from the living organism fed efficiently and put enough light on to get the energy to run the AI. Nice simple sustainable closed loop. Don't even have to worry about the sun now. In fact, it might actually run more efficient if the sun goes out, because now we'll have cryonics we can use, right? The AI's got this all figured out. You, th you think that they need a actual people in order to work? Well, listen to this one. As we go to disc people that are incapacitated and diminished, and we can utilize those that diminished people to make it sound good like we're doing something. And we started with a whole being, a complete capable being in the physical, and now we're just using their brain. What if we just want their energy? Scientists have just made a human egg cell from human blood for the first time. Scientists in Japan, the Disability Implementation Center of the World, apparently, even as fast as DARPA, Scientists in Japan have used human blood to successfully create an immature human egg cell in the lab for the first time, according to new research published Thursday in Science. 
The work is a major breakthrough in stem cell research and may lead to the way babies that can be created in a lab using the body tissues of blood of their relatives. Is this getting creepy enough for you folks? Midanori Saetu, a biologist at Kyoto University who contributed to the pioneering research, managed to produce mouse eggs and sperm from stem cells back in 2012. I think we reported about that. Just a passing memory hole story. And I think I told you, watch out. Watch what they're doing here. Well, here we are now talking about people. From a blood cell. How many people do you think that the AI is going to make in those matrix podments that they're going to make? Uh, used them to breed healthy baby mice. It was the first time the eggs were created from embryonic stem cells. When Sayutu, Tou, I guess it's Sayo Tou, and his colleagues first produced artificial mouse eggs, they were grown to maturity inside the simulated mouse ovary constructed from the tissue of a fetal mice. Since this tissue would be the next impossible, since this tissue would be next to impossible to attain for you from humans, the researchers had to figure out a different way of creating an artificial ovary. We're just so clever little monkeys. To produce immature human eggs, Sayo Tau and his colleagues used human blood cells to create induced pluripotent stem cells, which are notable for their ability to become any type of cell. These cells were then injected into tiny artificial ovaries that were grown in a lab using embryonic cells derived from mice. I tell you the rats won the human race, folks. I told you this a long time ago. That rat told that guy, to just move my tail because I don't want you to embarrass me flopping my arms and legs around and making me make noises. Just move my tail. And the human said, okay, I'll move your tail. And the experiment was a success from the human standpoint. Now we're going to use their eggs. We're going to make humans. But remember, we got genetic engineering. We can make them to live in pods. And we can, the AI can take this and we can make those pods. They don't even need to have a brain. We just want their energy. See, we've removed the human. We just need their energy now. And they're using the humans in order to create that, aren't they? The eggs produced at say Tohu and his colleagues are far too immature. Well, they're going to work on that, folks. They're going to give you the reason why they need to continue to do this, even though ethically this is just so beyond. They don't even, it's just so beyond ethics now it's not even funny. If we had been in ethics, legal pretty much wiped that out. Remember, this is all corporate university. Remember, university is the consensus hub. They don't care about you. They care about what their outcome is. And that technocracy needs people that don't think. They don't even need brains now. Because once they get rid of the need of the human, the AI just needs to power itself. Remember, the Matrix is not a movie. Am I going too far? Is this really too sci-fi? I hope you can see the possibly probability here. It's not. This is right around the corner, it seems. The eggs produced are too uh, immature to be fertilized, much less grow to human child. Still, they open the door for babies made from genetic material of relatives dead and alive. Boy, what a contradiction right there in the first two sentences. They could also provide a way for infertile people and same-sex partners to produce a child made from their own DNA. What a benefit, folks. Except this is going to be run by AI, and AI is going to find out once the human gets rid of all the things the human can do, I don't need the human. I don't need to make food in the farm. I'll, I'll farm the humans. They don't even need a brain. I don't even know if the Matrix is a movie. It's not a movie. I don't even think they thought this far. If we're going to design people, I don't need them to have a brain in order to think, in order to satisfy. They're just going to be this organism that I just get energy from. Is, that, is this getting too wild? If it's getting too wild, why are they doing this stuff here, folks? Why is our perception of what we listen to more important than what this thing is pointing to? Why is our allowing this perception to ride and continue more important than stopping this nonsense? You're seeing the what you fear. It's a corporate world. You're watching this corporate world put in place the structure to take everybody out. The Matrix is not that far-fetched. But the, I think they actually went a little too short, now that I see this. They can make 
beings that create energy that the AI wants to harvest, they don't need to have a brain now. Because what we're doing is we're removing the so-called human, the animal element, in how it has to function. Now, that might be sci-fi. Let me point out, the you, this corporate-type legalistic system has already removed the human element. Is why you see this darkness coming. Why people say the energy has shifted. As I told you, it happened in 2011, 2012. There was a decision that we, the people of the world, had to make. And we've made it. And we're now watching that right now. We can keep talking in the future, ten years behind the fact. but Or we can start getting up, getting up to speed. This technology is fascinating. It has great potential, but you see that it's not it's only used in the context of someone who wants to do something that they want to do, not as a mass awareness of what we need to have done. And I'm not asking the saying that I'm any kind of enlightened being. I'm saying these are very problematic. These are directions we we are not realizing are going down that have been foretold to us. As long as we have a brain to be programmed, but brainstorm seems like it works. Until then, the ultimate end in the matrix would be that we don't even need beings with brains. You're not a. You're just this organism. Because AI is the boss, folks. You're being told that right now, and you believe it. Oh, I know I don't. It's not. Well, no, you do because you keep plugging yourself in. Silent weapons for quiet wars. It all continues to be coming around and around and around, and we are in a, a complete denial. We would rather let this stuff think for us than ourselves sitting back and thinking about well, what did we just witness in reality? They're telling you they're going to get rid of the one farmer that makes better than minimum wage. They don't tell you about the rest of the farmers that are no longer there. Oh, her hands are sanitized. Oh, but we're working on getting rid of her job. The only thing that separates us from what we need is the human creativity, and there's no creativity in picking flowers. Now the AI looks and said, I got, I'm a boss to nobody but myself. I'm God. And I need that human back, but I need her in a different form. I need power. I need to power myself. I am the one. Neo. And we sit there and we listen to this stuff happening. And we keep plugging ourselves into it. It's, it's, it blows me away. We forget to put our own mind to anything. Uh, what, and, and something came up here a couple weeks ago, and I was going to get to it, but I didn't uh, didn't get to it in time. Uh, but it's time enough. Time, it comes in time of us looking at things and trying to figure out reality. And I can't say I have space and the planetary alignments and all the stars and, the, and all that understood. I have an idea. I have a couple of ideas. I have the idea they want to keep shoving down my throat, and I have a couple other ideas that maybe are different. And I can't prove any of it because I'm stuck here. And that's okay, because none of it really is relevant. So if you, uh, neither is the shape of the earth. I could care less of what the shape of the earth is. But when I got an oppressor on me, it doesn't matter whether the earth is flat or round. But I got my ideas. I got my observations. But what kills me is this division that gets thrown in, this uh, fascination that we do to distract ourselves. And we won't take a moment to s sit down and even try to figure out what actually just went on so that it, whatever it is that was reality that makes sense once you think about it, stops us from putting any more energy into it. And a little story came up here a week, a couple weeks ago, it made big news in this divisive thing called YouTube, where everybody without have a, has any kind of opinion can get together and fight with each other, or agree with each other, become YouTube gangs, go pound on each other over all this stuff that really makes no sense, no, makes no matter. As I said, I don't care whether the earth is round or flat. It doesn't matter when I got somebody beating on me with a big, or going to shoot me with a gun and got a costume on. Uh, or it goes and firebombs my, my mining claim. I don't care about the shape of the world. And yet, look at all the millions of people that could, that do regard all that. that regard all that stuff that's really nonsense. Oh, yeah, it'd be nice to know, but nobody's in the position to really find out. And then if I look at this and say none of it's relevant to anything, actually. Even if you are 100% right on either shape or form of the earth, it would not stop uh, the boss. 
that one day is running your world or your kid's world, little goats. And something came through, and I just kind of was an interesting fascination to me, how people that are on the Internet want to make big stuff about it. And it just seems to me to be complete ignorance. Nobody applies the most basic realities at all, even whether or not the disks are flat or round. It doesn't really matter in this case either. We're talking about the SDO, what was seen on a recording of two lunar transits in space where the 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 moon's shadow goes in front of a, a screen, and then, and then moments later it looks, it comes back the other way. And I saw so much flurry about all this stuff. And I said, well, that's pretty interesting. That is cool. You don't see that often. But no different than we see the oscillations over the time of the world and the oscillations of the weather and the so-called climate change that wants to ignore all that and the sun itself saying the earth is forced by the energy of the sun. Well, yeah, it creates all our life, folks. AI may like it when it goes out because it'll become cryogenic. It can go more powerful. It has absolute cooling on it when AI takes care of this. But no worry. But say the sun forces the earth. Yeah, let's, let's go into that paradigm. Let's buy into the climate change ho fraud. Not even hoax, it's a fraud. We're not part of a natural system, so let's call it out. Let's call out we're being forced. We're victimized by the sun. It is how this perception starts to go. We have no concepting of what goes on. We look at this tra lunar transit. It's fascinating. It did happen. It only happens if it happens at all. It happens very few times. It's always neat to see the, the, the incidental, I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the innumerous things. And sure enough, you see the, the moon go by or the something go by, a shadow go one direction, and just moments later as they play back the gif, it goes back the other direction. How the heck is the moon going in two directions at once is the big old deal. I didn't hear anybody sit down and try to figure out how that would be. And then I found out when I did it, I had a slight error in how I, because I didn't really pay attention anymore to this stuff. It fascinates me, but there's nothing really more I can do with it. I'm not in it. I don't do much with it. I like the space, I like the satellites, I like the planets. I'm a little ticked off that they did not, they argued with me when I said there was water in the universe when I was in, coming in through junior high school and high school, though. But now it was never anywhere in the universe, and now it's everywhere. That kind of gets me. Okay, I got something stuck in my craw over this, too, but it doesn't matter. I got my own views. Only took 30, 40 years to prove it out, but it's okay. But what about this disk that goes apart? Well, in one video I happened to see this. It, all, it was called out. You, ha you almost can't miss it anywhere if you're on the Internet about this big anomaly. Uh, and I was really wanted to just touch on our perceptions, how little we actually know, how little we time we put into what makes our perception, how, little we, how, fa how much entertainment we'll get out of it, how much we'll just continue it, even if it's just a question, that it really may have had an answer. And so I sat back and I said, well, well, let's put myself, again, as I do with this law stuff, let's go literal. Let's put it right down on the ground by time, chronology, and action. How does that play out in the words? I had to do the same thing in my mind. In the picture, picture of a, a system, it has a satellite. A satellite's going around. It's got a moon, another satellite around a planet. It's got a satellite, another man-made satellite going around the sun. Well, I didn't know where the satellite was relative to the moon or the earth. I, uh, that's uh, the SDO satellite. I thought I got it confused with the stereo satellites, which were way outside. My first perception was it was like in the L1 ring where it just sits around the sun and just stares at the sun. At that point, I'm wondering how does it, how is the moon even coming into the effect unless it comes at some plane? And so I didn't have a complete understanding even. But even so, my inferior understanding got me 180 degrees from what the actual answer was. So I learned a little bit in the analysis. But I didn't take the, the imperception of everybody claiming that this is a big deal. I guess what I'm talking about here is us applying our mind and not allowing others to think for us and not be. I was entertained with it for a little bit, but I said, no, no, there's got to. This is not. This can't be as ignorant sounding as it sounds. This can't be that. But reality would tell me the moon did not move in that direct in that trajectory at all. And so, let's go solve that problem. Can we? I set the the satellite out a little farther than it needed to be. And so that all that did ultimately is put the put the uh, interaction of the of the conjunction of the the sun, the satellite, and the moon on the other side. So we think about this conjunction. The moon, you see the image, and you got to kind of understand. Get yourself in that satellite, and and start thinking from the perspective of that satellite. And now I understand it's go. You're a satellite going around the orbit of the of the Earth. You're inside Earth's orbit. And so the moon is orbiting outside of you. 
and then you have the sun, which you stare at un unblinkingly until I see something else I hadn't really understood. But that satellite goes around the Earth; it gets it gets blocked by the uh, by the Earth. And so I have another interesting insight. Don't know how they do that, but there it is. But is this all that fascinating? Did the sun, did the moon really go in two directions? Are we witnessing a science, something science can't explain a, beyond the of a comprehension of man? Well, I don't know. I sat down and figured it out. If I can figure it out, then most people should be able to. And why aren't we? Why do we make up such a big deal, a big fascination over something? If I, if I behind the woodshed can do this, why hasn't more people sat down before they put themselves onto tape and file and become ridiculous? It is the condition that we are. That if I'm the satellite sitting there at the sun, looking at the sun, staring unblinkingly at it because I'm studying it. Again, I'm feeding information to the little creatures on the earth. And I'm in a similar plane as the moon, which is going around the earth. And I'm moving faster than that moon because I'm sitting closer to the, to the earth and have to move faster. Just the basic physics. I don't have to get into all that. We just know that's how it's going on. If you put yourself in that satellite in the frame of the camera and you go Go from right to left on the sun side of the earth, as you go around the earth, always facing at the sun. If I go from right to left, and I go faster than the moon, and roughly, in, in a, in a, and it goes right across my, my, my plane of, of the frame, wouldn't that moon go from left to right? And it would go in at the distance, the angle that I'm different to as I go around the earth in my plane. And then if I was on the left side now, as I know, of, the, of my orbit as a satellite, and I'm at the extremity of my orbit, I'm still going around now. I'm taking a path around the Earth, and I'm going back now behind the Earth. And I was still in the roughly the same plane. It just so happened, the miracle of coincidence. I got to see the moon again. Wouldn't it go from lower right to uh, up to upper left? I think if you put that in your mind, you have to conclude that it would. Now, there was another thing, a clue. They said, but the first object's bigger and the second object is smaller. It's not the, the first object's the moon, the second one's not. Why do people come up with this stuff? I don't know. I guess it's sensational. It gets millions of hits, folks. It's perception management on a vast scale that they don't even know they're participating in. One of us, because none of us sits back and thinks about this stuff. Now, if I was on the sun, uh, the sun side of the Earth, going around the Earth, facing the sun, and I crossed, crossed that moon, wouldn't I be closer to the moon then than when I went around the Earth behind the Earth and started to go behind the Earth, still looking and crossed it again? Wouldn't I have a distance change? Perspective would tell me my disc, my diameter of the disc, whatever they are, are going to be one's bigger and one's smaller. Is that not what I can consider? And isn't that what happens? The first passages I'm going through is a bigger disk. When I come away, I'm at a smaller disk. But you've got to remember, you're looking from the frame of the satellite camera. Now, to me, that was a whole lot more explanatory than jumping onto YouTube and saying, look at this anomaly, look at the sensation, and having thousands of people come in and argue with me or agree with me about this anomaly that doesn't exist. It's just a fascination of, of the coincidence of things going around in space. If you even believe in that stuff, and that's the other thing that kind of fascinates me too. But why do we take the perception of other people, buy into it, instead of sitting back and saying, what they're saying sounds ridiculous. Let's work it out. Can we work it out? Why aren't we doing that in that instance? Now, I'm talking generally. Some of you may have. Why don't we do that in that instance and then every other instance that we're told? And remember, we're starting here. The harder one is when you get to the experts. The easier one should have been when we got to the people that admit they don't know. They say around the table, well, I don't know about this. Well, that's good enough for me to go back off. Why did, if you don't know, do you have a say? Is what we do like in social media. It's a, it's a fantastic control tool. And we'll argue about our ignorance about all this. Now, did I understand I have the answer? No, I don't have the answer. It's only what I can pull out. What we did, what we saw was a satellite going on the moon, sun side of the, of the Earth, wrote, going in a satellite orbit around and then hit, hitting the moon on the backside. Uh, a distance change, a perspective change, a diameter size change. Am I knowing I'm looking at the moon? No, I just guessed that I am. No one said anything different. The only difference is said, well, the first one was not that was a moon, the second one wasn't. Well, if I can rationalize that uh, the second moon was by a my my eyesight, by the physics of our d d locality, 
Maybe that's a better answer. I guess I just, this is an object lesson of how easily we can buy into a lot of this stuff. And yes, I had to stop and think about it because I didn't know. It did interest me. What is that? But I see this happening on so many things, whether it's in space, and oh, Planet 9, uh, excuse me, Germany, no, what was it? Oh, it's, uh, Planet X, excuse me. Nibiru. Uh, it ends up, this, this flat Earth, this rationale starts coming and just, just destroying any concept of being able to think, think clearly. What, and that's on the stuff that doesn't matter, I guess, is the focus. You don't have, then, the capacity to do things on the things that do matter, is my problem with that. I, I'm grateful for the having the tool. We would never have the kind of things that we have. But does it really matter whether that satellite and that moon were coincident, whether or not... Listen, if Nibiru comes, you're not going to stop it. When the, uh, when, when the volcano explodes, you're not stopping it. When the earth shakes and sinks, you're not stopping it. So it's a fascination to me, the dynamic, but really, what is the argument? When we actually really don't know, but what we have is the worst problem, an expert say. And then we find out they're tied with what? The license to harm you. The license to profit from you. What do you think climate change is about? But that carbon tax market, all fraud. All fraud. So I just wanted to point out perception management. We waste time with a lot of this stuff. You hear people say, I don't know. And yet we continue to listen. And we continue to come back to listen. And we continue to get with people who come back to listen. And we all believe that what we don't know is more powerful than what's reality. And that leaves us susceptible to those that are in the positions that look like authority but are authorita to tell us that they're willing to harm you like we heard the CDC and FA, FC, uh, FDA say, oh, we're going to work with the manufacturers to at least get a view and notice that you're being harmed. We didn't, you weren't get told that before. When do we start to reapply our uh, real critical thought? When do we start to pair away, uh, cut ourselves from the herd? It is going to be the, the tail of the tape for us. And if we don't, it, Again, the darkness I saw that I couldn't see past is we're in that. We're now past. We're in the time and we're reaping the so-called rewards. And you're seeing it. the effect of it is everywhere you look right now. And that's why it's a little harder to find the few of us that are kind of working out how do you, what, what, what subject matter do you take that's important enough to go try and change into something that's reality because it's been made into an, a misperception is really what it is. You've misperceived what your government's supposed to be like. You've misperceived how it works. You've agreed to bar members who are just bar adjectives, legal adjectives. As I pointed out last week, that was, I hope you really appreciate the sitting down of that and going through. I don't normally do that. It takes a little bit more, and I had to put that together kind of quickly. But sitting down and being able to read for yourself or hear me tell you, I hope you went and read it, what the judges, so called, the justices said, they were completely ir ir disregarding the law and the proper application. To be in conformity with another federal agency, meaning there's a collusion. And if you can't do that by the objective basis, if you'd rather get lost in whether or not we've got a new bureau coming in and getting fascinated by that, we're done as a people. And I say, who cares if Nibiru's coming in? You're going to watch nature at her best. It'll put the, it'll, that'll put the, uh, the, the, the giant meteor to shame. Giant meteor will go be embarrassed and go somewhere else. Any one of those, I guess, could naturally happen, but none of us are going to stop any of it. And yet we're still here, aren't we? Despite all these cycles, we're all still here. And this is the other thing. Are we going to settle down and start focusing on things that matter and stop making excuses? Are you going to sit down and use the SDO uh, dual transit as a neat, a neat uh, way to get your mind to start working again. It took a little while for me to figure out, figure that out, and I was I was wrong when I started to realize where everything was. I was 180 degrees out. I wasn't wrong from setting up the problem. I was uh, I was wrong with the placement of the objects in the problem. But it was the same theory to work it out, and it says, oh, there's better. There's a real simple reality about this. It's still cool. Do not do, that's still pretty neat. It's that dynamic. But to get lost in a question that doesn't exist and then ultimately doesn't really matter is really a fascination to me that the Internet does. This digital world does. 
that's being now going to be controlled. You wait till the AI gets a hold of you. You think you see somebody's face uh, on a picture. You've already seen that the video's coming, that they can create the face. You won't even know it's not a real guy or gal, and you're going to be told what the experts say because it sounds so good. You have no, no capacity to beat the ability of, we're told, Watson has uh, to gather facts and tell you stuff. But it could be all wrong. Or it could be not applicable. So they get you, like I tell you, you could be 100 right about 100% right on something and not, not be relevant to anything you need to be doing. But does not describe social media. So along with all this technology to have uh, get people to run more than one thing, and uh, eventually I, it looks like to me they're going to get rid of the, uh, the Matrix. And the, uh, the movie The Matrix didn't go far enough. They don't need you to have a brain. You pod people, they just need you to function as a body that generates electricity they can harvest. And becoming uh, the, the human farmers, the machine will be. And they want more deployment of uh, this 5G. So one of the things to stop is to stop the amount of ability to get the information out back and forth between the machines and you. Or those disabled people that they'll make. But when they make you disabled, how's that? They're going to make you disabled with their chemicals that they get to neuro neurologically poison you so you're, you have muscle spasms and can't work no more. Well, here we'll give you a job. Wear this little skull cap. Won't you be happy, folks? And you will be. Oh, you're just a bu one of the few of the herd that had, uh, that had this happen to them. We'll help you. We'll continue the benefit. And so when some company hires you for minimum wage or whatever, whatever your uh, living wage is, uh, complies with your basic uh, basic income uh, requirements to work, but you just vegetate on how to run robots around to those that aren't. And be hoping and praying that they don't replace you. Uh, who is they? It's the boss. The AI has figured out how to get rid of you. They don't need your brain. They found out they just want you in a pod. And they got you there, because they got you figured out how you're going to be all, when they got you running a whole of, of ten farms of farming people, and you didn't know that, when they get rid of you, you are all you didn't even know that coming, because you're all just fascinated, you could even do anything. But the Bay Area City, uh, Bay Area City blocks a 5G deployments over cancer concerns, it's a little contrary to what I just told you about forget the health, but they were able to do it there, so for those of you that uh, see how they do that, you need to go see that, because I'm saying the way they have, uh, this was done in local, you're not going to do this at the federal. So local now you see the power. Are you interested in 5G enough to go do this? They made some c c cancer concerns. Their people who are in the seats of decision locally didn't let the boss tell them. The boss is still the people there, and they said we're going to uh, we're going to not not allow this in. The city council of Mill Valley, a small town located just a few miles uh, north of San Francisco, voted unanimously last week uh, to effectively block deployments of small cell 5G wireless towers in the city's residential areas. So you see the limit of the city. Their jurisdiction only extends. They're going to go ahead and limit. For those of you in this condition, you should listen very carefully on how they went and done that. They went to their seat of decision, the people they hired, by going and voting them in. Uh, your vote harder does seem to work locally if you get the right people in. And they pitch the problem to the locals. Whether that will have the force and effect to stop the FAA, uh, F, uh, the FCC, I don't know. But at least it's a start. I'm suggesting strongly that you, once you do that, you back it up with the failure uh, of, the, of the state government, utilities commissions, from following the APA. And if you know what you're asserting, you're going to be able to circumvent their consensus policies over you uh, where they are imposing the harms because they have their license to go read Title 50 at the federal level. This is part of the problem. You can't, and this is a national security issue. You're up again. I've been talking to you about how to troubleshoot this problem. If you aren't stepping into the game, you keep making up excuses, you'll never have the mind to be able to work with this. And actually, it's not that hard once you see how it works out. The few people I have that have done this, they get right to the point, they get right to the problem, and they realize how quick and effective the answer it seems to be. And so this is one where they've got the local people to decide to hold off 5G. And the 5G is going to be important with the implementation of this technocratic future, this AI being the boss, it needs that backfed information. That's what that whole process does. I've talked to you about all this as well, monitoring, gathering data, monitoring, and anal analyzing, and coming up with the outcome based on what your agenda is. That's the system. They need data. 
That's why I told you, big data corporations and all this stuff you're seeing that are benefiting the disabled are actually sets up for the ta setting us up for the takedown. And so what, you have this onslaught of cancer, they claim. Uh, I don't know one way or the other. I do know the energy is not good. I can just tell you that. The way the energy comes, the pulsation of energy is the problem. The way they measure it, measure it is, in, is irrelevant because it's not doing that kind of damage. It's not doing the thermal energy problem. But that's not where it's at. So that, that's what the, the whole... The experts that the federal's uh, agencies relying on don't include that is where you have to attack them there. Locally at the state level, at the county level, at the city level, you attack them. Well, they did it at the cancer level for city, but I say you're going to have to go to the state because that's where the utility commission is going to order those signals, that, that system uh, to be used from is those meters. And so you've got to stop it on the due, pro on the, uh, due process failure, the uh, uh, Administrative Procedures Act. But so here's where these things can cause cancer. You've got a bunch of people that believe so. There's a body of evidence also that can be used uh, from that, that people are making a decision. For those of you in thinking that's involved, that you want to involve yourself there, there's something that you can step into. Stop making the excuse. We see this other thing, another, uh, this is a, uh, another type of, um, another story that may counter that while, while you're trying to fight these people. Uh, this is uh, Grimner, is uh, near and dear to Grimner's heart. It's baking soda. It, this is, came from Lou Rockwell's site, uh, The Baking Soda Cure. The $3 trillion income stream produced by medical industrial complex is about to come demolished by a home remedy baking soda. Uh, researchers at the Medical College of Georgia have discovered a nerve center in a cell a layer in the spleen that controls the human response and therefore inflammation throughout the body. Given the virtually, the, that virtually all chronic age-related diseases includes inflammation, uh, calling infl uh, inflama inflammaging, this discovery is of monumental significance and has widespread application for virtually every organ and tissue in the body as the spleen is not only an abdominal organ that is involved in the recycling of old blood cells, but is also a key part of the human immune system. Let's stop there. Let's go back to the point of it. What does it do? It is working on the nerve center. What do the uh, chemicals stop in the in the pets and onto you and antibiotics? It develop it, it interferes with your nerve system. What is the being used and reflected in the AI system that's going now DARPA and Japan uh, can take dis disabled people, but the back nerve impulses are now fed in. So we're looking at the nervous system here as well. Your your societal nervous system, your global nervous system, your nervous system. It's all what's after being controlled. It's all what 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 is out there and, and simple baking soda has now has a study about what it does particularly not our opinions if we wanted to give enough over to the medical college here if you go and do the study and perfect it for you do your own peer review go get knowledgeable don't use someone else's fascination that uh, the moon went in two directions instead of saying wait let's put this in reality this may be a study you may want to do to fortify and to help you tell other people about what simple baking soda can do Again, everything in moderation. Everything has its reason, its purpose. Uh, I would say that some of this really is doing the effect. Really, we can't focus on the effects. Look at the underlying cause. I learned that a long time ago relative to nutrition and, and all that kind of neat stuff that our body, uh, uh, the, the body of wonder that we have that keeps itself fairly healthy for a long time. Again, uh, until that serious thing when mother nature's tougher than you like i said i needed the one time i needed the antibiotics if it wasn't for those i wouldn't be talking to you today and there was no it was kind of funny because uh, i just know about funny it was a reality about not being here two days later i real i knew absolutely knew in my soul that i would not be existent two days later and i was and somehow that was cool i was calm with it and the doctor that came in said i'm, I'm looking at a dead man you're not going to live till monday I said, well, it depends on your answer, doesn't it? And he started to laugh. He goes, yeah, but I'm, you're not supposed to be here right now. Most people die in four days. And it had been two and a half weeks, as I told you. So it was in a dire condition that this medical miracle called an antibiotic would work at all. But I haven't had them since then. So you put everything in its context. Baking soda, it says it helps. Go look at what else it does. It may do other things. You have to put everything in context. Look at the cause of why you're even having to need it. Talking about chronic age-related, you think this is going to make you, uh, you know, immortal? I kind of doubt it. But there is a balance of things, and you're going to go to your time and be gone. So come at it with a, a clear mind. Come at it with some support. Uh, you have to qualify all this stuff.
But if, if your angle is a simple angle, it's a more natural angle, the AI requires a ton of technology. That's why they call it technocracy. They require the policy constraints. They require to run through all these like algorithms. They require the infrastructure. Your job, if you wish to take it, is to interfere with that. And that's essentially what we do at the at the public land level or the uh, county level with property rights, land rights, water rights, highway rights. It's all the highway use rights, grant rights. You go to the least common denominator, which is the orig origin of the problem. You don't let yourself get into these uh, counter effects that you have to run around and, and, and deal with. So here's a little study. If you want to worry about cancer, maybe... Uh, being affected. Here comes a here comes a uh, a, um, a study from a medical uh, facility that tells you that you, uh, baking soda can act to interfere with certain aspects that that may help help that along. While we're while we're fighting against this uh, this literal beast against you. Another thing that comes on we've talked about, and I'm moving in here now to more of our health and keeping it up because if we don't have our health, we really don't have a whole lot. But, you know, we talk about how what the government offers is interfering with us, and all they're going to do is give you a notice on how they're going to continue to harm you. Which I always find fascinating. Then why is the problem about GMO labeling? Let me know what's in the food. I'll make my decision. Just Let's end it right there. I don't have to discuss it no more. Tell me you did it, and I'll make a decision on whether I want to consume it. But other things that we have... Uh, that interfere... Remember we heard earlier about the pet... Uh, tick and flea chemicals interfering with antibiotic uh, utility in body in our bodies. Uh, now we have another one here. Common antidepressants might help bacteria become superbugs. So we're looking at the system that allows the harm to you has effects that they've never ever checked that are now being found out over time. So again, as I was telling you earlier, if you wait for people to come and tell you the energy is shifting, they're eight years late. Uh, you're going to be eight years late at least on this kind of information, and we are when you look at back when they started doing this, how late. It's about a 10-year shifting time. Uh, it's pretty interesting how consistent all this is as well. I wonder how this is not in a plan as well, but it just must be the way the natural progression of things happens. There's a 10-year cycle between starting and implementation or implementation and finding out the truth, if you will. A common antidepressant sold under the name Prozac could be helping some bacteria build resistance to antibiotics. Now, if we look at the other story, maybe this is the same type of interaction. The interaction of those other drugs are interacting with the antibiotic, uh, the, the nature of the of the beastie that's causing the problem and then interfering with the ability of the antibiotic to work. Now, here's one a study that shows that there's a mechanism for that. And this study published in the Environmental Environment International found that fluxetine was capable of indu inducing antibiotic resistance in laboratory strains of E. coli. Fluxetine is a selective serotonin up reuptake inhibitor, SSRI, a class of drugs that uh, prevents certain neurons in the brain from reabsorbing serotonin and neurotransmitter. People with clinical depression often have less serotonin freely available, and SSRIs boost their levels, helping treat the condition to some extent. And then you read the product insert and says it might, may cause... Uh, you to kill people. Any rate, this uh, this drug also causes a problem with your resistance to uh, to the to a, a bug that they may take of because it makes them stronger. And this was the problem that we saw early early on. They talked about this. They knew this was coming in. This is decades ago. They knew this was a problem where life is going to persist. It's pretty tough. And so here, keep up your SSRI. It's not that you're going to eventually kill somebody. You're trying to get off of it. You're going to kill somebody or go nuts or whatever. No, it's going to make. And you, next time you get in a, an infection, you may not have a you may not have an ability to fight it off because it becomes this the the the, the SSRI you were taking it changed the ability of the of the back of the beastie to to fight it fight off whatever you were taking. Antidepressant induces multiple antibiotic resistance in uh, Escherichia coli via ROS mediated mutagenesis. And that's the, the study that you can read. The mutagenesis, again, genetic changes as it goes along. They know about this, and they're still going to allow you to do it. You heard about it in the pet food up front of this, article, of this broadcast. 
So we have, again, as I was talking last week about the betrayal, this is ongoing. This is the thing that they say that none of us really speak out again. So we'll talk about how bad it is, but we'll not really really take a few minutes to write a, a, a letter and follow up. You say, what's writing a letter? Well, it starts a record. And eventually the avalanche happens. If you all start doing that, the avalanche happens, and they, there's nothing they can do. When the uh, and when the natives get restless, there's nothing they can do. The natives are restless. It's it's keeping you in a in a feeling that you have nothing you can do. That perception management is all empowered empowering to them. And so we have cancer coming on. We have the, if we see that we take in these things that would reduce our abilities, that enforce the nature, that rebuild the nature to destroy us even further. Is what is licensed to happen. You know, Title 50 allows all this. And you have someone in the government that comes up and tells us, tries to explain to everyone who's been uh, the perception management of people of which would counter to this, you see how they treat her as well. It's an example to what happens to any of us that step up and start to actually do something. Not just talk about it, but actually do some. Days after 9-11, 911, Tulsi Gabbard slams betrayal of American people over Syria. Again, we got to the betrayal idea. This is to the idea of perception. People are be, per, they perceive a thing when it's not actually the case. I want to point this out. She's talking about this, but you see that there's a mass perception that people agree what's go, what's going on over anywhere actually that's wrong. In a rare and unprecedented speech delivered to the House floor for just two days after the National Memorialized 9/11, Democrat Hawaiian Congressman Tulsi Gabbard. On Thursday, slammed Washington's longtime support for anti-Assad jihadists in Syria, but while also sounding the alarm over the current buildup of tensions between the U.S. and Syria, uh, U.S. and Russia over the Syrian crisis, she called the Congress to condemn what she called Trump administration's protection of Al Qaeda in Idlib and slammed P Washington's policy in Syria as a betrayal of the American people, especially the victims and families that perished in 9/11. So there's her political statement. The point is, she's pointing out. A clarity. She's blaming it on Trump as a political statement. The fact is, this is this is predates Trump. You're just watching the continuation, and that continuation is because of a massive perception management that's been going on. That no one has shaken themselves. The darkness I saw that we passed through that was dark to me. It wasn't darkness. It was just a darkness to me. There was nothing else told to me what happens past the time, and I we passed that time. Uh, it wasn't a darkness, it was just a blindness. And it's still a blindness. It never came back, but we see, we can now see the effects of our inaction. That's what I finally realized. I'd, I'd forgotten all about that. I kind of went away for actually a couple of years. But we've had ourselves, the, the management of our perception is so complete that they have us either agreeing, uh, disagreeing, uh, or not agreeing to either, and doing, and all three factions doing nothing. For the most part, there's a few little groups of here. You heard the city come stepping up for their own selves. At least give them time to stop the 5G. You hear certain things going on here and there. You hear me talk about things that we're doing. Little things here and there are happening, which means they can happen. But you're not hearing that as a mass of people acting in, in their own protection, essentially, against this sort of betrayal based in the mis, mis, uh, misrepresentation of the perception. We, this is the main thing, and this is the power I wanted to bring today, how complete this uh, this control is in us. And we can, again, be led by the nose. Uh, we can be drowned uh, by a misperception of what we thought was good. Uh, come, you know, what we what we give credit for being good can to come and abuse us. And then there's that condition where with the Stockholm Syndrome, where we start agreeing with the, the one who's abusing us. That's another thing. We, as we go along, they're always getting this AI needs the, the information. The feedback loop is you've got to get information, they've got to take it in, and then they send back out the signals. And the signals will be either be a direct action to start to, to cause the, 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 uh, the outcome they need, or it'll be the signals of actions that you start to perceive. And we got now the mechanism in the DARPA story and in the, tech, the Tokyo. You, you can just use your brain and you get feedback, both to a device and from a device. And it also as it comes to me, there's a, a new prosthetic, I think they're, they've designed somewhere in Europe, maybe Italy, that they actually 
now are it's not just Tokyo sending signals back or DARPA. They're actually sending sensations back up through the a new hand, so that people with that don't that have uh, no have hands or arms, they can now feel. And so this information, this digital input, sensory input coming back to us, is now present in the world. The point is, is that this this system, this Borg, requires this information input, and then it compiles it, and then it can use it. And this is the problem about the surveillance. But here we have revealed Canada uses massive U.S. anti-terrorist database at the borders. Why would Canada have access to the U.S. terror base if, there, if the borders existed? Should be your first question. If your United States of America was in fact separate than Canada, this should not exist, but it does. And I don't hear any any out, uh, outlandish, uh, you know, as outlandish a concern over this as I would a, a, tr a dual transiting moon through the frame of a satellite. Canada border guards have now screening travelers using a huge secret, huge, huge secretive U.S. anti-terrorism database that is almost never referred to publicly. New documents really reveal the database called TwoScan is provided to every Canadian border guard and immigration officer. It empowers them to detain, interrogate, arrest, and deny entry to anyone found on it. Remember, that's secret to us in the United States. And if you think that's going to become more public, after what I've just told you about AI being the boss and collecting all the information and sending the orders to the, to the workers, to the prisoners, they're just happy to have their job, you better rethink all this thing about how this is working. And what we've done as a people, we've said, well, I'm not going to go anywhere. Instead of, as I've suggested, you need to do, address all the Once you get the proof of it, you need to address it. Some of you have to step up and say, I'm going to travel, I want to travel, and I'm not going to let you, you, you guys do, you people do this. And find the path you need to do to, to make a note of it, first of all, uh, make it no notorious for people, and then make it an issue. Oh, here. So anyway, there's here's the information you can read about. It. I can talk about it. We can read about it. We got can the cancer in the system is, is needs baking soda, folks. We need to get our neurons back. We need to get functioning better. It's not it's not going to be you sitting in some pod, even if that's behind your computer in your pod chair, while they have you ineffectual. And that's really all. You're just a bunch of pod people as long as you're not effectual. That's as much as you mean to them. You haven't brought your creativity forward. And I don't mean in the art sense, although, I mean, the artistic sense or creativeness. You haven't brought any of that out. And so as long as it doesn't see a reflection of that, it can deal with you really handily. So it creates a surveillance, creates databases that they can treat you. When you go there, it's a big surprise attack. What you need to do to offset this is you need to attack this. Because if you don't, then you become people that can't move. And it may be people that have no authority. But... Continue because they have not stopped. There's no accountability. This story came right up as soon as I was told. We were told about the border guards that can detain you and all this going, coming and going through that border, utilizing a foreign database, no less. You know, read this: Israel just banned Ahed Tamimi from leaving Israel. This is a Palestinian a teenager at the time. Now she's a young woman of, of capacity. Uh, she got she got uh, picked up by the Israelis uh, to uh, because she slapped. Uh, a soldier in defense of uh, him uh, against them shooting her cousin in the face, blowing his face up. She got collected up, got detained by this uh, by this really non-authority at all in a territory that's occupied. They are occupying again. All right here, we go back to the occupations in our lives. This is what happens when you let the occupier continue. But they banned this woman from leaving the open air prison that she's been put in. Doesn't seem to be sound like any different than Canada using a database to keep you from coming or arresting you or detaining you indefinitely as well. Underneath this quiet, silent prison that they put us all in, the ban comes 20 months after a head Tamimi was released from a prison after serving an eight-month sentence for slapping an Israeli soldier. It, did she get released from prison, folks? No, she got released from solitary confinement in the prison which happens to be the walls of, of Gaza and the ocean guarded by the ships of, of the Israeli occupiers, is the microcosm of your life wherever you live. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to point this out. This is an excellent, I don't like it, but this is an excellent example of how it's not supposed to be, and nobody really stands up against it.
And I don't have to, you know, to go to the global side. You do not do that in things in your locale. I, I just know that it's not done. And we have another extension of this on when you start to address these occupiers, they're going to come against you and they have all their reasons and they have their own false logic. And you're going to have to have a, an, an analysis about how this is not appropriate, appropriate, not applicable. As I was pointing out last week, explaining that you can have an official saying something and he can tell you that there's a prohibition and then you can look at very carefully and find out, well, the prohibition he spoke to was against his prohibition to order the thing in certain instances. And then you have to learn that you're part of the instance that's spoken to in prohibit, uh, to prohibit him. Uh, the Why calling Israel an apartheid state or racist is not anti-Semitic. We went through this before. I want to just point out how this all starts to relate, but how we have to respond. You can come up with uh, these terms, and they're used to defame you. They're used to uh, cause you to be off balance. And you have to have a better word in your mind. Whether or not this document can do that, whether or not I've provided some things, I don't know. I just know I've provided a knowledge, an awareness, that you're going to have to have a discussion when someone comes after you. And this is a great example of a, one of the more, you would think, more heinous examples of how you have to stop this use of a bad thing in the world but uses a cover to do harm. And you're going to have to be able to resol resolve that, each one of you. It's not anything you'll be able to understand until you get involved. Uh, the frenzied debate over the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, or more precisely the definition of an illustrative examples, has centered over whether the document restricts criticism of the state of Israel and legitimizes solidarity with Palestinians. Now you just heard that they took someone who they put in jail for defending her family against an occupying force, and then they stuck her in a place that was supposed to be her home that becomes her prison. These are the same people, and these are the same people that are causing this question. That if you present, represent, if you try to protect her, you're going to be an, an enemy to them. This becomes the world, folks. This is a dynamic that goes on that if you don't sit back and start to analyze it, you start thinking that the dual transit of the moon over the satellite is something really, really phenomenal and not, not natural. Unexplainable. In fact, as I went through and I told you this, the use of the term anti-Semitism is improper. And we went. I won't go through it again today. I want to point out, you are living in a prison. The occupiers will keep you. If you don't do, do what they say, they're going to harm you some more. They're going to keep you light, tied down even more. And they do it with these terms. They do it with these capacities that no one responds to. Or properly so. And so we bring on, we bring on the prison by not responding to it. She got it. This, I'm, I'm, I had Tamimi got a global response, and it wasn't enough. Should tell you something that no one squawks that Canada is using a database that the people of the United States paid for, essentially, by the way they want to tell us. Shouldn't should raise a, at least an eyebrow, and it doesn't. That people are being destroyed underneath a fraud and a hoax and a misuse of terms should bother you. The fact that it's actually perception management should bother you worse, because that's working on you. And it's going to get one of three probable outcomes. You're going to agree with it, you're going to disagree with it, or you're going to disagree with the entirety of it and just say it's irrelevant to you, so what? You just say it's just no good and do nothing. The point is, every one of those positions is not going to stop it. And so we hear, we see a, a, a function going on in the world in the Middle East. You go into the world and you start looking at the reflection of what we talk about, this prison, the pod people that you're being made into, made by the boss called AI, utilizing the people they're going to be putting in the pods in order to advance it, and I'm just talking now, this is what they did with Bitcoin to most people. They don't understand that's what's going on, but I told you that there's going to be an underlying authority that's bringing these policies into the world. And who did I say that was? And I, I think I wrote to somebody or said something. That when they said the pivot was to China, I don't think people appreciated what they were actually talking about, because when they did it with Obama, they put it underneath a military con cover, and it wasn't that at all. China now has perfected the Internet control playbook, and now it's exporting it to the world. 
is a story that just now pops up. After decades of ba back and forth over Internet freedom, China has figured out a method for allowing people to use the Internet for social and business purposes, but not for political reform. A combination of huge boiler room Boiler, huge boiler rooms full of sensors, centralization of Internet services under tight control, and, uh, government control, and control over standards to issue the surveillance and censorship uh, are always possible. I told you that China was going to be the hub of doing this because they were in a population base that was big enough. It wasn't world size, but it was big enough to do a, a, a control policy structure that they already have a problem with that they need to control it. If they could do it there, they could export that to the world. You now hear the story that this AI internet control by government boss is now coming on to uh, preclude any kind of uh, ev avoidance of it. So vast is this that Google China prototype links searches to phone numbers. All right? The, this is a. I told you this phone that you have is going to be the one of the one of the key parts. This is the thing about Minds.com, and I don't know about, I don't really go to Mind. I just drop something in there. Uh, since the tokens have gone, there's like hardly anybody that comes to listen to the broadcast where they, they used to come in the hundreds since the tokenization. What they need to know about the tokenization, they needed a phone number. They claimed that the, that the tokenization was to use a special and generate a special, your special ID for the token. But they need a phone number. This story says they need a phone number. So where's the truth? How about if you just learn not to apply it? How about if we just back off of it? But this is what they do. We get to reception management. Oh, it's not going to harm you. Yet we see right in the news that the biggest search provider working with the government, who now has problems with that government as well, it's working out how they're going to give the government what it wants so it can continue to do business. And the phone number becomes critical here. Your connection becomes critical to this AI. They need the connection. They need the feedback loop between you so they can do the control. The boss needs the information. As they figure out how to really take more of the bottom line, how to harm you, but just enough that you continue to be harmable. And so we can continue to not look at this or argue against it, and it's going to continue until we start doing things like saying, well, I'm just not going to participate in some of these things. I really don't even, I look around, I don't even know what to do in the social media, where to go, I just, I'm having it. I'm, I have nothing, nothing more to know about it right now. It looks like this big trap. We aren't making an, uh, an, an alternative as, as well. Until we start figuring out alternatives to some of this stuff, uh, it's going to be going down this way, and we're going to watch this, what I brought in, what sounds to be sci-fi. You're watching The Matrix is not a movie come right on. You're watching the governments of the world coming into compliance with how that's going to be functioning. From a process that would started back in the, in the 30s as a, as, a, as a movement. But before that, if we want to get into this example of what Zionism might be uh, relative to physical control. It's not bad enough they put you in solitary. They're just going to keep you in the prison. And no one's going to say much about it. Why? Because they're going to be so busy with the being able to control it's going to be so fun to go into a game and you control parts of the world you control robots and serving other people because that's what it, that's what seems fun for everybody that's the entertainment now, i'm occupied if i'm occupied doing that i'm not going to be doing anything else and that just plays right into the occupiers need they need to have you entertained they need to have you uh, arguing with each other coming up with things that are not actually uh, important but but you think are important because you said it so and you still say that you didn't know that you said you didn't know anything about it, but you still have an opinion on it. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something said uh, gives you an insight, gets us moving in the right direction, and starts uh, starts us in the right path. Remember, thank you for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Appreciate all that, and uh, maybe and Jules, if, as long as you keep this line uh, going at UCY TV, hope you come back at some point. It is September. I hope you can uh, work that out for yourself. Appreciate that, and all you guys mirror on all this uh, everywhere that you do. Like and share and all. I appreciate that. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>